All right, watch fans. Today I've got another Venger. At least I think it is. So we'll find out. I'm um, pretty excited about this one. This one's actually uh, supposed to be pretty cool. It is a. I think it is the the Alpine, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see. Very cool. Of course, gray market again. So I'm expecting you know a couple things, possibly a dead battery or cloudy watch face but you know i can always fix those look at that the venger alpine man that's a gorgeous watch all right let's watch this quick video technically pronounced venger the company dates back to the late 1800s the company got its start in switzerland in the canton of jura this region is overlooked by the Jura Mountains and famous for a number of watchmakers whose names are too many to list. The company's first line of products include industrial cutlery and butcher equipment. Technically known as Paul Bouchette and C, the company would become known as Wenger after Theodore Wenger, a minister who'd served in the U.S. military, returned to Switzerland and joined Paul Bouchette. They quickly worked to produce a new pocket knife supporting a government contract for the Swiss Army. This contract was split with the company Victorinox, thus beginning the long relationship with the company. For nearly 80 years, Victorinox and Wenger both produced Swiss Army knives. Wenger began production of watches in 1988, a year earlier than Victorinox. Things looked promising for both companies, but they were both hit hard in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. New airline rules outlined the use of pocket knives, which were common among passengers. Eventually, this took its toll on Wenger, and the company was saved from bankruptcy only when Victorinox purchased them. Eventually, Victorinox became the sole producer of the Swiss Army Knife, while, com while both companies continued to produce watches under separate names. While the Wenger brand is known for as an entry-level watch, that's not to say that they haven't produced their share of quality watches. Their most famous high-level watch is the GST Classic, which was a mechanical watch powered by the famous Valjoux 7750, 27 joule movement. This watch retailed for over 10,000 US dollars. The watch is extremely rare and came in at every conceivable complication you could imagine to include moon phase, day, date, and month, second time zone, and chronograph. Wenger is truly an underrated brand, and I really cannot emphasize this enough. They produce watches that range from 100 in today's US dollars all the way to 2,000 for their high end watches. Most of the watches I will review from this company will be in the sub-500 range. For the price point, you absolutely get a substantial value, and this watch is no exception. All right, guys, so now you have a little bit of history on, on Wenger. Um, first things I'm going to talk about, and I've already set the watch uh, to my atomic clock. Um, this packaging, this is retail packaging, so that is usually a good sign uh, when you buy things from... Uh, uh, what's it called um, from from gray market but uh, in some cases it's not all that great and you know I, I keep meaning to do a separate video just on just on uh, gray market to kind of give you guys sort of an idea uh, what to expect and how to identify really what you're getting uh, the normal this is retail packaging so if you were to go to like a jewelry store or a store that specifically sells vangers that might even be someone like uh, Macy's right uh, but for example, if you go to somewhere like Costco or Sam's Club, <clears throat> you're going to get a watch in, in this, which is fine too. I mean, nobody really cares about the packaging that you get. This is from my uh, Vegar Urban Classic, one of my favorite watches. But, um, you know, nobody really cares, right, too much about packaging unless you're getting something like, like one of those Ingersoll wooden boxes. But um, when you get retail packaging from a, uh, a gray market seller, that means that um, either a company went out of business and they got a hold of all the old stock or it was a return. And so I suspect that this was likely a return and I'll tell you a couple reasons why. I mean, there's some obvious wear signs. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to see if I can see it in, in my camera, but there's some little abrasions here on the sides as if it had been worn. It could also come from being in the case, but you know, this is, it's, it's a, it's sort of a faux, or fake leather padding but this is always indicative when you see the way these things are cast 
uh, the metal stands proud at the edges. And of course you can see there's a little bit of wear on there. Um, and of course the protective uh, coating is, is off. So who knows why that might be the case. Maybe they just didn't like it. Um, the watch seems fine, so it doesn't look to me like there's anything wrong with it. But of course I'll run it through a series of tests uh, to make sure that it's valid, at least if I decide to sell it. But I'm not really too concerned. Um, you know, one of the first things that I'll mention too, let's see if I can get a good, a good visualization of this. On these Vengers, the backs are very prone to scratching. Let me see if I can clear it. I don't know if you can see, but they're, you know, you wear them like even once and they get a little bit of scratches on them. And I think you can see. And so that's why they put a protective coating on there. Cause this is, this is laser etched. Uh, they, they, they literally have a laser that cuts into this. <clears throat> And so if you see any scratching on there, it's because it was worn. It doesn't last very long without getting scratched. It just is what it is. Um, you know, you're going to have one for two months and it's going to look completely scratched up. So this one probably could have been worn for maybe not even a week and somebody returned it. Who knows? Who knows why? Um, but it's a very nice watch. Uh, me personally, uh, it's PVD coating. Uh, and that, that essentially means that they just... They blast it with powder, uh, and then uh, they use, if I'm not mistaken, um, they use an electronic char uh, uh, a charge to um, adhere it. Uh, and, and so it's good, but you don't get full coverage. And so here's here's an example. See that you can see in the edges, and that's not that's not necessarily just worn, but it looks good on the outside. <clears throat> but then between the links, now of course when you're wearing it, right, it's going to be, um, let's see, it's it's perfect for my wrist. It's that, you know what? <laughs> I think it's actually missing links because nobody would sell a watch like this. Uh, like this is actually a bit tight for me and I don't even think I could adjust it. So this is for seven and a half. I mean, this is maybe perfect. I'd have to adjust it a little bit, but yeah, it's missing links. So, um, but you know, when you're, when you're wearing it, you, of course you wouldn't see those end links and it wouldn't be a big deal. And that's quite normal. But me personally, if I was going to um, wear this watch, which which I might actually, because I, I do actually really like it, and I do want a watch that I can just go and wear, uh, I would want to have one of those nylon uh, straps. Let's see if I have one in here. Uh, shoot, you know what? I've got one here. This is a good example. I wouldn't use blue. Of course, I'd use black. This is an old, what is this? A fake Henry Sandoz. <laughs> it's not real. But these are really nice. And, and I know I bought a couple. Oh, you know what? Here, this is perfect. This is what I'm talking about. I would wear one of these. Um, these are spectacular. You can get them for... I mean, they are very high quality. And they sell them all over eBay for like, I don't know, 3 $4. So they're perfect. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, also, these are stamped and rolled. I'm just not a big fan of these kinds of watch straps. They just... I just can't stand it. Um, this is a solid bezel, so it does not move, but that's okay. All right, let's get let's get started into this. Um, I want to do the loom shot because I think that the loom is probably going to be the best part of this watch. I just have an idea. Um, it's orange, so we'll see. Well, green. Pretty cool how it looks orange but comes out green, but that's okay. Uh, this is perfect. I wouldn't expect anything more. Nope, oh, sorry. So, good loom. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Let me do some measurements. Sorry. I hit my camera. All right. And also, just in case anybody was wondering, and they've been watching my <laughs> my my eBay store, I I had uh, in the span of four days probably about a thousand Atari Jaguar games, uh, well, not that many, uh, but probably about 150 Atari Jaguar games. And for those who don't know what the Atari Jaguar is, that is a video game system that came out in the mid '90s, and it was really popular for a short while, just before Atari basically went out of business. And, uh, 
you know, it came to, I came to the realization that I've got all these games, I've been collecting them, and they're still making new ones, actually, believe it or not. They're actually making new Atari Jaguar games, and I figured, why am I keeping these? I'm not even playing them. I don't have time to play them. You know, I'm, I'm into this watch stuff right now, and um, you know what? At some point, I'm going to have to pay for my daughter's college. She wants to go to MIT. <laughs> Nothing you guys care, but I better start really saving, so I started add, I, I sold off all my games, and that's why you guys saw all that. Um, and I started putting them up on on uh, on eBay to pay for my dollars five twenty nine college education account. But the funny thing is, is that um, <laughs> a lot of people who were buying my games also bought my watches, which I thought was funny. <laughs> All right, forty two millimeter uh, wide case, and across with the thing it's forty five, but that's not really a measurement that anybody cares about. Lug width is. Let's say 22. It says 21 and a half, but I don't think that that's normal. That's not a normal. Yeah, you know what? 21 and a half. Strange. Okay, so if that case, that was the case, you would probably order a a 22 millimeter nylon strap or a a 21, but I think I would get a 22, and you could just kind of force it in there. And 11 11 millimeter uh, thickness. Um. Okay, I'm going to show some, I'm going to have to do this after the fact, but I'll show some movement pictures up here. I suspect that this is either going to be a standard Ronda, like a very a low end Ronda, like a 5, 512, something like that, um, 513S, or perhaps a, uh, a Miyota. No, I guess it wouldn't be a Miyota, it'd be a, a, an entry level ETA, which is okay, but I'll put all that information at the bottom. And I'll also put pictures right there. So you should be seeing that. Pretty cool. And the, let's see, what is this? 100 meters. Okay, so this is a 100 meter uh, water resist. So, you know, I'll put that chart up there. Uh, that's one thing I like about Vengers is they really don't mess around. Pretty much all of their watches, except for the really fancy pants watches, like the ones where, you know, they... Uh, you really would never wear it swimming. Uh, most of those are 50 meter water resistance, which is like completely unnecessary for those types of watches, but they just do it just because. But the rest of these watches are all uh, 100 meters like by default. And I really like that. I mean, I get, I think it's, that's quality. And that's, that's the Wenger quality that you're getting. <clears throat> they certainly don't put it into their watch straps, which I think is very frustrating. Um, but what can I say? Um, that's always been an issue of mine is their watch straps. I just don't like them. Their watch straps basically stink. They used to have really good watch straps, but um, not lately. Uh, but the watches themselves, high, high quality. Uh, and, and this is only, you know, the MSRP for this is $295, right? And you know you never ever end up paying MSRP. So this watch is probably had for $125, $175 all day long. And that's a really good price for what you're getting. I mean, this is a good quality watch. Somebody that buys this, the strap and the watch are probably going to, you know, you'll probably have two battery changes before this watch is really beat up to the point where you would swap it out. Uh, the the crystal is sapphire coated, <clears throat> three layer sapphire coating, which Wenger does on all their basic watches, which is very nice. This is their Swiss military uh, brand. Um, it is, their logo is there on the back. Uh, on the front, of course, and they usually have it, yep, right there also. So not too gaudy, but it's nice. Again, I would put something, different kind of strap on it. Like, I wonder if this one even fits on here. Does that match with the colors? Not really. Yeah, you know what? This would work. I might even put this up. If I put this on, I'm going to show you what this looks like with it on. I'll just add a little picture right here. You know, I'm going to do it, but I won't do it now. But you'll see what it looks like right there. So, because I think I'm going to keep it. Because it wouldn't be fair for me to sell it as new when I can clearly tell that it is probably a return. But I like it. Uh, what else can I talk about it? Um, gosh, I think that's it. I did the measurements. Uh, crystal movement. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, if you enjoyed this video, and actually, you know what? I will say, I, uh, I just ordered one of my Wenger Grail watches. So I don't know when that's going to come. It's coming from Germany. It's not a very common uh, brand here. I will give a hint. The model begins with an M. 
but I'm very excited. I've been looking around for it for a long time. There was only one on eBay, but it's brand new from a watch shop in Germany. I guess they never really sold them in the United States, but I finally got one. I'm very excited. As soon as that comes, I'll do a video. Um, if you have any comments on this, or if you'd really like to see me do a video on on gray market and just kind of put everything together, I will make sure to do that. Uh, just let me know in the comments what you think about that and if it's something you really want to see. Uh, and I'll try and put that together. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe. It really makes it worthwhile. I don't make any money on these. This is really just for fun because I get to see all these watches. And I do these videos because if I ever sell the watch, I can always go back and watch it. And it's like, you know, I can still see like as if I still had it. So. All right, guys, thanks a lot.